Some predators are iconic, even obvious, while others are surprising, and you never even recognize them as a hunter. I'm Boone Smith. As a wildlife biologist, I spend a lot of time in the forest tracking big cats. The trees hide a secret array of predators, and every single one of them has to specialize, compete, and take advantage of unforeseen opportunities in order to survive. A young Bengal tigress swelters under the Indian sun. It's 115 degrees, but she needs to get up and get moving. Too young to have claimed her own turf, too old to be with her mother. She's homeless and hungry. It's a bad time to be a wanderer in this increasingly lifeless forest. It's the dry season. There's little cover, making the tigress easy to spot. It doesn't take long for her to stumble into an unlikely scene. A gathering of chittle deer, with food raining down on them like manna from heaven. The source of this blessing is Langer monkeys, taking advantage of one of the few still green trees in the forest the acacia. They're messy eaters with excellent eyesight. Great lookout for the nearsighted deer. The tigress would be happy with either one. Absolute stealth is her only chance. before she can even pounce. It all goes to pieces. She didn't blow it. He did. 500 pounds of cranky cat. She was hunting on his turf. And now, she has to pay the price. <laughs> she 
she wisely submits and is left to tend to her wounds. She's lucky to be alive. If she were a male, he might have killed her. She has to move on, deeper into the dry, desolate forest. Suddenly, there it is. Paradise. A lake, drawing every kind of meat on the hoof for miles around. It's hard to know where to start. Venison? Pulled pork? Tastes like chicken. Not again. This time, it's crocodiles. becomes opportunity. Finally, a real meal. Even the biggest cat in the world struggles in these parched woods. But the luscious forest can be just as brutal when you're a pint-sized predator. The Central American rainforest teems with frogs. Many, no bigger than a nickel. There are hundreds of species, and every single one of them a fierce little predator. They'll eat just about any creature they can get in their mouths. Rainforest frogs begin their lives with the odds stacked against them. Most frogs simply lay their eggs and abandon them. To the elements and to predators. But one fierce little frog stands by his young, the reticulated glass frog. It's named for its transparent skin. Get close enough and you can see his organs hard at work.
Mom is nowhere to be found. Dad does it all. Guarding the clutch 24 hours a day. At night, the father transfers moisture through his own skin onto the eggs so they don't dry out. Come daybreak, he must defend his brood from their worst enemy. Squadrons of carnivorous rainforest wasps take to the air. A frog nightmare. They're aggressive, persistent, venomous, and nearly as big as our glass frog. They're not interested in him. They want his eggs. But if the wasps think they can eat his babies without a fight, they've got another thing coming. He's a frog ninja. One little frog can only do so much. Some wasps make it to the clutch. But reticulated glass frog babies appear to have their own exit strategy when they detect extreme danger. Our cameras filmed it for the first time. Some of the embryos pop out prematurely and make a break for it. Even if only one survives the onslaught, the tiny father's heroism won't be in vain. Every level teams with predators attuned to their particular place. At the very top, over a hundred feet up, life is precarious. Here, a petulant princess is imprisoned in a tower. A harpy eagle chick trapped atop one of the tallest trees in the forest, the Quipo. She's a 20-pound monster, daughter of the most powerful raptor on Earth. She's nearly full-grown, except for one thing. Her flight feathers are still coming in so she can't fly. Usually her parents drop off a monkey or a sloth every few days for her to eat, but she hasn't seen them in over a week. And she's getting desperate. 
The nest reeks of old kills. Biting insects are a constant torment. Hunger drives her to try and choke down the putrid leftovers. To make matters worse, her favorite meal is just trees away. A sloth. Moving at a mouth-watering one-tenth of a mile per hour. It's time to give those wings a try. Dangerous business. Harpy chicks can and do fall out of their nests. Flying practice turns to tantrum. a workout for those talons. They're as big as grizzly bear claws. It's a long way down. Trapped, and doesn't know when her next meal is coming. Deeper in the forest, another sloth ascends to the sky. Unaware that a fury of maternal instinct has taken to the air. Sloths can live for 20 years. This one won't. seven foot wingspan, the mother harpy eagle carries her catch with surprising ease. If 10 pounds of sloth doesn't satisfy her demanding daughter, nothing will. Fresh meat is finally on its way. It's about time. At first, the overgrown chick seems defensive. Mom wins her over.
she tidies up the nest. Then she dismembers the carcass and feeds it to her giant daughter as if she were a newborn. Harpy eagles raise only one chick every two or three years. This is a rarely seen, intimate moment between two of the world's most aggressive winged predators. Harpies are masters of the canopy. But far below, hunters without wings or legs thrive in the tangles of the rainforest. Looks like this guy's trying to get up the tree here. He's a boa constrictor, and he kills by strangling the life out of his prey but he's got cousins I'd rather not handle. The forest offers a variety of habitats that predators can utilize. The ground, for example, it's covered in brush and debris, great places for venomous snakes to ambush prey. Nearly invisible in the leaf litter, a killer has been waiting motionless for weeks. She's a Bushmaster, the largest pit viper in the world, and one of the most venomous. She chose this spot carefully. Her tongue can detect the lingering scent of rodent traffic. She'll stay here as long as she has to. Finally, she begins to pick up tiny vibrations. Pits on her face pinpoint the signature of body heat. human stands a one in four chance of surviving her bite. This rodent, none at all. Always starting with the head, she walks the prey down her gullet. One fang at a time. After digesting a while, she'll slither off in search of something bigger. The Bushmaster has a surprisingly sophisticated map of the rainforest in her head. She remembers exactly where she last saw her quarry. An armadillo. She doesn't want its meat, she wants its hospitality.
Armadillo dens are the perfect size for what she has in mind. Hidden in its burrow, she will lay a dozen eggs. For two and a half months, she'll guard them, not even leaving to eat. But when the babies begin to hatch, she's already gone. They're hardly helpless, though, and quickly get down to the task of finding the first meal. The Transylvanian forest is as dark and foreboding as its creatures of legend. werewolves, and vampires. But the most bloodthirsty of them all is quite real. The least weasel has a problem. He simply can't stop killing. His predator programming has no off switch. At only five inches, he's the smallest true carnivore on Earth, related to fierce wolverines and badgers. So don't let that face fool you. His metabolism is so turbocharged, he needs to eat more than a third of his body weight. That's up to 10 meals every day. Good thing the least weasel is perfectly adapted to live the life of a solitary hunter. With his long, flexible spine, his whole body becomes a vice, constricting the prey. His jaws and canines are like a lion's, able to puncture the skull with ease. He stops only long enough to eat the brains, his equivalent of an energy bar. He doesn't have time for the rest now. The compulsion to kill propels him back to the hunt. His collection of corpses grows. He's a serial killer with a hoarding problem. And he'll kill nearly anything that moves. But this looks suspicious. Right size? Definitely wrong colors. The fire salamander oozes poison.
Nearby mice bolt to their burrows. But the weasel can hear ultrasonic sounds made by the rodents. Anywhere his head can fit, his body can follow. Even complete darkness doesn't stop the weasel. His nose and ears can see just fine. Only the very quick and very lucky escape. But for him, losing one isn't the end of the world. Least weasels have been found with up to 50 carcasses stuffed away. But the tiny terror of Transylvania shares these forests with an even larger appetite. In these last stretches of primeval woodland, giants still wander. For decades, thousands of acres were off limits to humans. But now, people are back. And Transylvania's huge brown bears are feeling the heat. These mountains are full of them. Too many bears and shrinking resources means conflict. Smaller bears get the short end of the stick. But a lost carcass is the least of this bear's worries. His woods are booby-trapped. This Transylvanian bear has stumbled into a snare set by poachers. He's frightened and helpless. aren't here to kill. They belong to a bear rescue group. The tranquilizer is effective, but it won't last long. They quickly take vitals and tend to his wounds. As he starts to come around, he's anything but grateful. Mm -hmm. 
The camera, set up to record his release, will never spy on him again. floor, ants frantically go about their business. Order is maintained through constant chemical communication. They collect food. They defend their colony. They also take their dead off the field of battle. A tactic that allows an infiltrator into their midst. The Zodarian spider, a con artist, and an ant killer. She must become an ant to catch one. First, she embeds herself with the troops. Dicey. If she's caught, they'll kill her. If they think she's a spider. Walking on six legs instead of eight, she pretends her front to her antennae, mimicking her prey. She singles out a loner that stops for a bit of grooming. The spider attacks from behind. Her venom does the dirty work. Full body paralysis. Now, how to get out of here alive with the prize. The Zodarian spider uses her victim as cover. The ant's scent masks her own, a kind of cloaking device. It's time to get really devious. She pretends to be one of the ant army's cleanup crew. She now needs to run the gauntlet of suspicious ants, tapping their antenna with her false pair. Chemically camouflaged by reassuring ant odor. She loses her nerve or drops her bounty. She's exposed. But a couple of quick flashes of her antennae, she's back in business. Now she can make a beeline home. At a safe distance, she sucks up the juices until nothing is left but an empty shell. 
she retreats to her bunker, a tent of rocks roped together by bits of her own webbing. Close the door, and she performs another disappearing act. The forest is full of lone assassins. But sometimes teamwork proves just as effective. India's scrappy wild dog, the Dole, has long been reviled. But what it lacks in image, it makes up for in courage. They've been known to take on tigers. These rare dogs are crazy about each other and work together like a well-oiled machine. This Dole is a standout guy. Like most of his buddies, he's mastered the handstand pee. He's no bigger than a border collie, but in a pack, he and his underdog pals can be terrifying. Right now, they've set their sights on a sambar deer. 600 pounds of good eating. They flush the deer out of the cover of the forest. The doles have stamina. So does the sambar. When the other doles give up, this young guy doesn't stop dogging his prey. It looks like a standoff. But doles swim too. Without his pack as backup, though, he doesn't stand a chance. The dole, exterminated for ages as vermin, is still in danger. Only now are we coming to understand their intensely secret lives.